Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here with a new project today that I think is kind of funny. I ordered a lamp from Amazon that was clear glass that you could see through so I could fill it up with some kind of craft. I've been sitting looking at it for a couple months now and hate the white lampshade, so I thought that I would doodle on the lampshade. So that's what my big plan is. The piece of paper that I held up is vellum, and it was a doodle on a vellum, I think 8.5 by 11. And I decided that I wanted to mimic that same or copy that same pattern close to it onto the lampshade. I didn't do any extra prep to the lampshade, just took it off the lamp and went to town. Um, I, looking back on what I've done already and the way that some of the pens are going to bleed, I'm not sure maybe if I should have put a clear gesso over it. But you know, this is a learning experience and you learn by your failures. I don't think this one's going to be a dismal failure, but I don't like the bleeding of some of the black pens I used. So I'm starting out with a pasta, black pasta pen. And in the middle, it started bleeding. And when I mean bleeding, it kind of feathers out the defined lines. So they're not quite as sharp and defined as they could be. So then I decided, well, let me try some other pen. I think that's the Uniball Air. I have them all here in front of me. Let me get them. So I started out with the Posca. Then I went to the Uniball Air pen. I'm going to use a black Jelly Roll pen. Two different ones, but both black. I also use the Uniball Signo pen and the R2 Rollerball pen from Dollar Tree, which cost a dollar. Um, I think the ones that feathered and spread the worst were the Posca and the R2 from um, Dollar Tree. It's not really meant to be done on fabric. It does great on paper. Not waterproof, but it does great black on paper. It is a very black pen. Um, the Uniball Air is great on paper. Not as good on fabric, but it didn't feather when I used it, so I kept going with it. The black jelly rolls did okay, but if you want something dark, you have to go over the outline more than once because it's not dark enough. Um, the texture on the lampshade is like a uh, like a very good quality linen. It's woven, and it does have slubs in it, which means bumps where the the uh, string or thread was not as smooth as the rest of them. In the knitting world or the spinning world they call those slubs. So I'm sorry I'm out of, there we are, back in frame. I'm sorry I go in and out of frame because I've never <laughs> doodled on a lampshade before and I forgot where the camera was while I was doing this. So I wanted to try and um, stay in frame as best I could. So I cut out some of the footage of um, me not in the frame. That looks like a box of popcorn. <laughs> I shouldn't have put that last one, the cherry on top. So I just keep building on flower after flower or doodle after doodle. Some stuff I colored in, some stuff I left white. Looking back on some of the things that I can see now is I would have left more white and less colored in black space because it, as much as I wanted to doodle on the lampshade, I didn't want to do away with all of the light. If I wanted to do with all, away with all the light that came from it, I would have used colors. But I wanted a little black and white and as you can see some things did blacker than others, like the outfly of that big flower right there is a Posca. There I am using the jelly jelly pen. Oh, went back to the um, Uniball Air. The Uniball Air and the Signo did really well for the very fine detailed stuff, the very small things. The Posca was mainly for outline. And it takes a little longer to use the finer point pens because you're fighting the fabric. 
and I have fabric pens sitting here, but there's not a black one in the group, and I didn't want to use colors, otherwise I would have used the um, fabric pens, but I went with what I had that I knew I had black pens for. So I keep rolling it around, looking at it where I want to put things. I really didn't think it out very well, <laughs> which you guys who watch my videos all the time know I jump first and ask questions. So I'm just trying to do larger things first, and then I will go back in and fill the empty spaces like between the petals and between different things to fill in the space. And this is a jelly roll pen. Like I said, you have to go over it more than once because it does not do well coloring in large black spaces. It's more for fine line detail work. I think I'm shaking up a Posca pen right here. Yep, there we go. <laughs> And then I switch back to the Signo Uniball pen because it does great fine lines. I think maybe, did I color in the stripes on this one? I can't remember. Yeah, I colored in the stripes with this because they were so thin that it, I was able to color in some of it with those. I mean, color some of them in with that pen. There's only one thing on there I regret, and that's the one that looks like the popcorn because the Posca I did the stripes in for that one bled so bad, even after I'd been working on it for about a half an hour, it still bled, and all the little black parts started to fuse together, and you don't it's very fuzzy and blurry looking. And I cannot think of any way to fix it except for to put a white Posca on top of it. And it already got fuzzy once. I don't want to see that happen again. So I did leave it alone. I wanted to fix it so bad. But I left it alone. I learned my lesson. Maybe. <laughs> this is the Uniball Signo that I'm filling in with. It can fill in, but it takes you a couple minutes to do it because it's not really meant for that kind of thing. Now we're back to the jelly roll. So I kept using the same four or five pens for different jobs on the lampshade. They're my favorite doodle pens, but I know that um, they're not great for fabric. Now if you use a cotton sheet, you probably could get really good results with these pens on, on a sheet. Maybe not the Posca, but the others. Poscas I would use to fill in color, not do the original lines for the flower. After what happened with that one where close to my hand, I don't think so. So I did not finish the whole lampshade because it's really law it's well, it's a small lampshade, but when you start doing little tiny doodles, it seems very large. So what you're going to see today's video of what I finished is about a third of the lamp. The other two-thirds will be facing towards the wall, and no one will see the back side's not done. <laughs> and it'll be an ongoing project until I finally finish it. That way, if I get bored at looking at one side of the lamp. I can always rotate the shade to something else, but now it's not possible because it's all white on the back side. So I think I finished about a third of it. I'll keep on it until it's finally finished, and then I'll, I'll do a follow-up video where I show you the completed um, shade. You know, I like this so much and want to experiment more that I'm starting to look cross-sided at all the white shades in my house. <laughs> which is a bad thing. I'm watching TV while I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing the voiceover. Some British mystery thing.
So I'm, I'm going to try to fill in some of the gaps. That, and some of it, I do fill in the gaps as I go around that the, the flower there, the top one by the popcorn box. <laughs> I tried to fill in some of it with little circles. Because going back to do all that tedious stuff is not my thing. I want to do it as I go to get it done so I look like I have a nice solid piece. So I do the large to medium stuff first, then I go back in and fill with the little stuff, but I don't get too far away from the big stuff. Mostly it's line and circles, lines and circles. It's, it's nothing that somebody else couldn't do, I assure you. Did I mention I have another shade in the hallway? <laughs> As I'm doodling, I'm thinking about the next flower, the next place to go, how good or bad the pen is performing, how I should swap pens out for different jobs. Now, I did not use the Micron pens because I've already had experience with them on watercolor paper, and they do not do well with nubby surfaces. It tears the nibs all to pieces. So that's what I did in about 45 minutes to an hour. There we are at the jelly roll. And see, I filled in some of the empty spaces, and there I go trying to fill them in so I can see what it'll look like and where I need to put another large flower as an anchor. Some of the circles that I put, the little bubbles in between, I'll put a little black dot in on some of them. I do a little curly thing in the middle. I think it's called pretemps and Zentangle. See, I'm just doing little circles, then I go back and emphasize them, or I'll put little dots in them. I'm trying to fill in the gaps as best I can. This really was a wonderful project. Not well thought out, but thankfully it turned out pretty good. I didn't throw out the trash. How about that? All right. Now, I had a bad experience with this silly Posca pen. You'll see it in a little bit. Now I'm back to the jelly roll. Because I like the Poscas for the for the outlines. I don't use the Poscas to fill in spots too much after what happened with that little box of popcorn flower thing in the middle where it fuzzed out. I knew that I could not do a lot of stuff with the Posca other than to outline things. With the Posca, you have to work a little harder. I'm not the Posca, I'm sorry, the jelly roll. You have to work a little harder because that little roller ball is taking a beating. And then I had to clean the roller ball out on a napkin every once in a while because um, fibers that you can't see get stuck in the roller ball and then the ink doesn't come out as well. So you need to wipe it off every now and then to get the fabric boogers off of it. And yes, I don't doodle that fast. This is speeded up, <laughs> sped up, I think, to uh, two times. This took three or four hours. Just doing a little at a time. It's kind of slow trudge. I kept the designs as simple as possible. And like I said, I used that vellum piece that I showed in the very beginning as my inspiration. I wish there was some way to fix that one flower that's very blurry, but I'm so afraid that it, uh, my fix will make it worse than what 
it actually looks like. I keep rolling it around looking to see where I can fit things in where I need to fill in the gaps to make it a more solid cohesive piece. Sorry, I'm out of frame again. This is not the kind of thing you do when you want very crisp, detailed items. Because like I said, some of the pens bleed and so your crispness is gone. And you think you're doing really well and then you go back and look at it and you go, whoa, what just happened here? I'm trying to fill in some of the white spots. All right, this is where I <laughs> I had an incident with a Posca pen. Oh, it's coming. I had an incident with a Posca pen that you'll see in a second that I was not expecting. Again, going over the jelly roll stuff twice. And I kept switching between two jelly roll pens thinking that one would do better than the other. Not exactly. It's just that one needed to be cleaned off while I was using the other one and so on and so forth. As much as I enjoyed filling in the little spots, this was a lot to fill in. I tried to put mediums to smallish sized flowers in gaps so I wouldn't have as many little tiny bubbles to draw in the empty spaces. It's a very busy lampshade. Because the lampshade has plastic on the back side, I took my hand and tried to lay it underneath, place my fingers underneath where I was drawing so that it wouldn't crease the lampshade or cause it to pucker or cave. All right, here's the Posca pen incident. It was going just fine. Uh, this is what I expected. Shook it up a little bit more. Same. I knew it was going to feather a little bit. Shake it up again. Only this time. Wait, it's coming. I had to go over some of them twice because it wasn't going well. So then I went around a second time like, oh my gosh. Look how dark it got all of a sudden. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden that Posca pen woke up and said, Hey, <laughs> she's using me. I have to produce. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, look how dark it is. So I started getting panicky. I'm looking at the other stuff going, oh my Lord, that is so dark compared to the rest of it. And as I'm filling all this stuff in, I'm starting to break out into a cold sweat. <laughs> but I just ruined it. And I'm trying to think in my head about how on earth am I ever going to fix this because this is not my focal flower and it is now so I'm, I'm going through the jelly roll really fast so I can go on to the next part which is damage control <laughs> and I'm thinking and thinking and thinking and I look at it and I look at it while I'm doing the lines and I'm thinking, oh, this is a mistake. Why? Why? <laughs> so I grab the Posca and I do something crazy. I outline those flowers again <laughs> to make them stand out as much as the other one because that 
one that's very dark is not the focal flower. I didn't mean for it to be that stinking dark. So I went over the larger flowers, which were meant to call attention. So then I go over the other one because it's not as dark. And see the difference? It's much darker the second go round. I don't know what happened. That Posca just all of a sudden got ink or paint and it went to town. I was upset that it pulled that shenanigan after I had done all the other stuff. I was like, I'm not happy about this. But we carry on. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Like I said, I only did a third of the front. There are some photos here at the end that look terrible, but they are of the lamp with it turned on.